We are live. This is the Icy Mike Imperfect Podcast. I'm Icy Mike. Today we're going to be discussing why coaches, senseis, instructors, martial arts school owners do not remove dangerous or rough students, problem students, people that are hurting people, why they do not remove them. Uh, Now this podcast is Brought to us by CrossFit Grenada, or excuse me, All In Fitness in Grenada, Mississippi. All In Fitness in Grenada, Mississippi, in lieu of typical types of sponsorship, has just opted to ask that if you would consider donating to St. Jude's St. Jude Children's Hospital. And as I always say, you're kind of a piece of garbage if you don't. You know, that's a real easy look at that. Like, how do you not go click that? There's a link down in the description below. If you don't click it, if you don't click it, you are human garbage. <laughs> it's easy. We will be taking some callers. I do want to start out with the disclaimer that maybe you're going to tell me, "Oh, at my school that's not tolerated." Well, maybe that's true or maybe the guy we're talking about is you. <laughs> Cuz if you don't know about this guy, there's a chance that you are this guy. So, Without further ado, let's jump right into the podcast. We are streaming simultaneously on YouTube Live and Podbean Live. I am hosting. I am talking. I'm also engineering. I'm doing it all. So, I had to kick a guy out of the gym. It's the first time I've ever had to do it. Yeah, clink that link. Clink that lick? Click that link. You know what I was trying to say. I've never had to do this before. I had to kick a guy out of the studio. I say gym. We actually call it the studio because I wouldn't really call it a gym. It's a small place. It's about private training. I've fired personal training clients before, which there's a couple things that made this decision easier for me than I think it is for other people. I was actually better prepared to handle it than other people, but until I had to do it, I didn't actually understand why so many school owners, senseis, instructors, and coaches, from now on I'll just use one term somewhere in there, instructors, I guess, school owners, whatever. I understand why so many of them are reluctant or even negligent in doing this. I finally get it. I never understood when I was on the other side. I do understand why they have trouble now, but I was lucky that I had some other experiences that prepared me for it. This all began maybe maybe five or six months ago, a, a good few months before you know the shutdowns and everything put us on hold. I had a student, a guy come up, sign up at the gym, and the night he showed up to check the place out, uh, I was a little concerned, um, but he was he was a funny guy, but he had some preconceived ideas about training. He trained elsewhere. He was pretty experienced. He trained for several years with guys that I knew and he'd had a couple fights. And but there were some some personal issues that made me a little concerned about him, which I won't get into now, but we took him on as a client and he was a super nice guy. That's part of the problem. It's a super nice guy. If someone is an asshole and beating people up and hurting people, That's an easy fix, but super nice guy, very pleasant, very helpful, stuck around to help clean up, paid his dues during the shutdown, opted in, requested that I continue to bill him. So we're talking about a nice guy, a good person, as far as I could tell. We're talking about a good person. First first few lessons, I'm already starting to feel that this guy trains really rough now i know the group that he used to train with and they are known to be rough they come from a gym culture where they they beat each other up and whoever can keep coming to practice gets tougher you know the cream rises to the crop cream rises to the top in that sort of environment and if it weeds out people that are not tough and are not hard you know so he had some experience he knew what he was doing he picked up techniques quickly he was an older guy but he'd had some fights and uh i could we could we could shorthand with him i could he just dropped right in and actually his previous instructor is in my lineage 
sort of. Um, so a lot of the stuff we were doing, he was already familiar with. Um, well, we start a clinch flow and he is grunting and groaning and pulling on me and sweating all over me within minutes. And I always go with a new person. I always partner with the new person, the first, maybe even two or three classes. And, uh, cause I usually have gloves and shin guards on it's small classes. And I usually like rotate through and I'm always a partner. If we have an odd number, I'm always training. Uh, cause we never had, we only have like six to eight people per class. They're small, like broken up classes throughout the day. Um, he was really rough with the clinch flows. He didn't get flow. He didn't know what that meant. Everything, all his drilling and sparring and stuff was always competitive, I guess. And I said, Hey, you need to go easy. And he's like, uh, I'm, I thought I was going easy. And I was like, no, you need, you need to go easier. And, uh, this sort of to cut a bunch of weeks out, there were several weeks where each week during class, now this is during class, not during sparring. This is class drilling. You know what I mean? Just working with your partner. I had to remind him many, many, many times to go lighter. Um, I saw several times people visibly annoyed in their face when they had to work with him. So I soon figured out that the only people I could pair him with were people that were much, much larger than him and experienced, which I had, I had, I have three of those. I could, I could pair with him or I could put him. We have a uh, young kid, barely a teenager in our adult class, but he's, he's very big. He's also very mature. I could pair him with him and he wouldn't go hard with him. But over the five months, there were several times where I verbally s- explained out loud, you are going too hard. You must go lighter. I sat him down. He stayed after class several times to talk to me about it. And he said he didn't understand. Well, one night in training, he broke a dude's toe. They were just like checking kicks, kicking each other and checking kicks. And there was a combo that ended in a kick. And sometimes we were checking it. He broke a guy's toe. And the guy had to leave to go to the emergency room. And uh, I was um, a little annoyed. And I felt sort of ashamed because... I had had several formal counseling sessions with this person where I, we sat down in chairs next to each other and I explained of what I expect out of him. That same night after the guy goes to the hospital, his next partner walks off the mat annoyed at him and is like, they're talking and, and kind of like fussing with each other, I guess, to use a Southern term. And I, all I heard him say is the guy, his partner said, hey, I'm just trying to understand what you're doing here. And I didn't get more out of it. Now, here's where I went wrong. I always tried to, um, I always tried to, um, create a culture where everyone was like very friendly and very cooperative, where no one was competitive and no one was, and I actually tried to instill a rule where you were responsible for the amount of force that your partner gave you. So if they were going too hard, you told them they were going too hard. And I tried to remove the stigma from that. And I realized my error in that I'm asking grown men to tell other grown men, hey, you're going too hard. And they wouldn't do that, even when it was true. That's just not a thing that happens. And I tried really hard to like let it, like I tried to watch and I would see it and I would say, hey guys, remember, just tell your partner, you know, if you want them to lighten up, lighten up. Tell them you want to go faster. Tell them you want to work on technique. Tell them whatever you got to tell them. But I actually said, hey, you're kind of like a wuss if you won't say that to them. That's the culture I was trying to create. And it didn't, exactly um it didn't exactly ever happen that way no no adult male in there ever said to another adult male hey ease up so this guy hurt a couple of people in inconsequential ways but he broke this guy's toe and it was it was pretty badly broke it wasn't just like a broken toe like hey tape it up and move on it was kind of rough looking you know what i mean and uh kristen came up to the studio and looked at it and was like and kristen if if you want to go to the hospital, you need to have like bones showing, like you need to be really hurt. And she looked at it and she said, "Yeah, you might want to go." She used to work in the ER. Um, so fast forward past the shutdown, and we come back together and we're doing some sparring. Now, this is the type of guy in sparring. His opening, he has one of two opening moves. One is a push kick to the front of your lead knee, and the other is he throws a low kick, and if you check it, he kicks your base leg out from under you he did that to me the first time he came to sparring he kicked my base he threw a kick and i picked up my leg to check and he kicked my other leg out from under me and put me on my tailbone opening round of 
friendly sparring. And I'm looking up, I'm sitting on my butt looking up at him. And it's not that I, I don't, I don't care that anyone knocks me down. I have several students that I cannot beat in sparring. And I say beat, I mean, like I have several students who have to go easy on me in sparring. That's not an issue. I don't care. I have, you guys have seen that. I don't have much ego. Um, the issue was that, uh, you know, it was like the first kick he'd ever thrown at me. It was an interesting choice, you know? Um, and then, uh, from then on, it never, I, nothing like that ever happened again. I wasn't worried. I didn't take any chances with him. I didn't pair him with anyone that I knew couldn't beat him up and, or a kid. I could put him with a kid or an adult. You know, whenever we had, we had a couple of teenagers that were coming to sparring and needed partners. But the guy, so many times we had formal conversations where I said, you are going too rough and I need you to go lighter. And uh, he all, every time he said, I don't get it. I don't know what I'm doing. That's how we, that's how we used to train. I trained with so-and-so, you know how so-and-so is. And I said, yeah, I do. So I don't train with those people anymore. This is how we train here. You know, that's just not what we do. And we're talking about a person who is not going to fight again. You know what I mean? And we, and we have mixed skill level classes. Um, well, I let it go on too long and I thought I could bring him around. And when I was pairing him with the, the teenager, it was working. It was, that was working really well. That was actually the only thing I did really right in the whole scenario. Well, it all came to a head one day after the, um, after the, uh, we all came back and we started sparring again. And one day it was just three of us there. It was just me, Nate, and this guy. And so we were doing two in, you do two, and then you sit one out. And we were just on a rotation. And uh, one of the last sit down, like, powwows I'd had with him, you know, he was going kind of rough. He said, am I going too rough with you? And I said, I want you to understand something. And this is where I, like, this is where I went wrong because I, did, I, don't, I don't have a lot of ego or pride or brag about myself or anything like that. And I remembered what I was trying to explain to him was that everything that he was doing to me when I said he was going too hard, he was only getting to do any of it because I was allowing it. And that he was only getting to do anything to Nate because Nate was allowing it. And this is a guy, He act, we actually had one other student who got really pissed off at him and hit him through a belly pad and put a big bruise on him through a belly pad. Um, and I was a little miffed at that guy because that guy's bigger, younger, he's a 24-year-old phenom, you know, built like a Greek god sort of dude. And this guy that we're talking about is not. And I was a little mad. I was like, hey, man, you can't, don't, don't do that. Just let him know. Just tell him to stop hurting you if he's hurting you instead of doing that. Because I don't like that. I don't like people hurting each other. And I don't, I'm trying not to have that kind of place. So anyway, um, and uh, we, we're sparring, and he's going really hard. And here's the problem when you're small, when you're smaller than somebody. I only have one option. If you are going hard with a smaller person, he only has one move. If you're going hard with a smaller person who you are more skilled than, you're just an asshole. Um, for reference purposes, you guys are asking, uh, we're going to, some people are asking how old the guy I'm talking about is. We're going to say middle-aged. I'm not exactly sure. Middle-aged. Um, maybe 40s. I don't know. Um, if a guy is smaller than you and has less skill than you and you are beating on him, you're just an asshole. If a guy has more skill than you and more ability than you, but he is smaller than you and you start beating on him, it's not a huge problem, but he only has one way to deal with it. There's, I only have one move. If someone is going really hard with me, I have one move. I have two moves. I can just do nothing and take a beating or I can like go super high intensity. I can't like just manhandle it. I can't manhandle anyone. If someone goes too hard with Nate or with Jim or any of my big guys who are also skilled, if someone's going too hard, they can easily settle them down. You know what I mean? They can just, hey, hey, <sighs> they just put a big paw on them, you know? And it's over. <laughs> like, I've, I've chosen to not allow you to, to do this anymore. I only have one play. 
but I didn't start hitting him hard. You know, I did not. I kind of wish I had. Because he, did, he didn't get it. I was trying to communicate. I remember I tried to communicate that the only punches and kicks that he was doing were ones that I allowed. I left room in the round for him to do them. And uh, <sighs> he didn't get it. I remember him saying, I don't think I understand what you're trying to tell me. And I didn't want to tell him, like, dude, the only punches and kicks you're throwing are the ones I let you. That's not entirely true. He wasn't totally unskilled, but he was older and out of practice. You know, he just didn't have the gas tank to go three minutes. You know what I mean? Go three minutes of nonstop, which is when we spar, we we usually have at least 10 of the rounds are three minutes bell to bell, nonstop. That's that's our rate. That's our the rate that we push. I We don't stop. I don't stop moving forward. No one stops punching. No one stops kicking. Um. So we start sparring. He's going too hard. I said something, right? And then... He hit me hard one more time. One more little front kick to the front of the knee. <laughs> and I got annoyed. And I just gave him probably about 30 seconds of full speed, but no hard impact. Just to bring the point, like I can I can literally punch and kick continuously for three minutes straight. I knew that he could not, and I was trying to show him like I can I can let you punch and kick me or I cannot. But I didn't punch and kick him hard. And, uh, so, and then he said, whoa, 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 you know, what, what am I going to like, what's the problem? And I was like, yes, you're going too hard. Stop it right now. We can do that. I said, I can do this or we can go back to training and actually trying to improve and we can all be friends. And then the rest of the round was like the lightest, tappiest round. And here's what's crazy. It was his best stuff. It was the best stuff he'd ever done. Like, the whole time he was there, that round, he was doing really well, really flowing, and looked really good. And I said, see? In the middle of the round, I'm talking to him. I'm like, see, isn't this better? Isn't this better? And the round ended, and he said, uh, you know, I didn't really know. I don't really know what you mean, but I'm, I thought we were just practicing. I thought this was practice, and I got a little annoyed. I'm not annoyed that he was making a mistake. I'm not annoyed that he was punching and kicking me. I'm not annoyed that he was hurting me. I was annoyed that he was hurting my people, you know? And I was annoyed that suddenly this had become, uh, you know, a democracy. <laughs> it's not a democracy. Um, well, he goes and sits down. And then I start my round with Nate. And he says... Um, I don't remember what he said. He said something as the round was starting. We were starting to go. We were already touching. We were already practicing. We were already sparring. The round had already started. He said something else. I can't remember exactly what it was because that's when I kind of, that's when I lost my temper and I behaved sort of unprofessionally. I said, uh, I said, um, no, 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 no. You're, and this is when I started cussing. So I started cussing. I said, you're fucking confused. I didn't fucking ask you anything. I'm not asking you anything. I started talking to him the way I talk to my son when I get mad at him. I said, I didn't ask you a fucking thing. I'm telling you what I expect out of you. This is not up for debate. I pointed the M on the, this is the ass, I started doing asshole shit. I pointed the M on the floor. And I said, that's the M, that M is for Mike. That M is for, like, this is my place. I own this business. It's not up for discussion. This is what I expect. This is what you will do or you will get the fuck out. <laughs> it was not professional. But Sundays, and I've, I've told other people this, people that have shown up. Sundays, I'm not in coach mode or trainer mode or teacher mode or business owner mode. Sundays, I'm there to train. So I was not in that mode. I didn't have my mind right. I didn't have my entrepreneurial brain on. I was not Mr. Professional in that moment. And this was five months of me seeing him, uh, you know, hurt people and then act like, I don't get it. I don't understand what you're telling me. And this time he was a little antagonistic about it. Like, this is practice. I'm, I'm just I'm just practicing. And uh, definitely not a troll says he really rustled your jimmies. Yes, jimmies were definitely rustled. And I don't get, I don't often get like that. I don't often get like that. If, if you guys have seen lots and lots and lots and lots of me, 
I'm pretty even tempered. But he was like, I don't, I don't, what makes you think I'm going too hard? I said, every single person that trains with you complains about it. Every single person that trains with you dreads it. Every single person that trains with you asks me not to train with you. You broke Jim's toe. You know what I mean? You, uh, you, you, you've hurt people. You've run people off the mat. Um, and I'm sick of it. And if you don't like it, I said, you can train here. I was like, basically, I said, if you do it, you can do it my way or you can get the fuck out. That was, that was it. And then I went back to training with Nate. Nate, Nate was very, <laughs> Nate was, <laughs> we had an okay round. I said, I said, dude, we can do more of that. We can go hard if you want to. I can do more of that if you want to. And he said, with these pillows on, I, I don't even feel anything. And uh, I said, what? He said, I didn't, I didn't feel anything. I, you weren't doing anything to me. <laughs> so so that, that was when I lost my stuff and I started cussing at him. Um, that's what he said. I was trying to remember what he said, but that was it. He said, I, you weren't doing anything to me. <laughs> so I just said, it's not up for debate. Do it my way or get the fuck out. That was the moral of the story. Well... <sighs> I now understand why this doesn't get nipped in the bud in other schools. Cause here's here's the th- here's the thing that has happened to me. I'm gonna tell you a story about uh, my daughter, my three year old daughter Remy. She was in a daycare, and um, that daycare was pretty cool. I liked it. It was it was kind of yup uppity yuppy. There wasn't a lot of toys in the room. You know what I mean? But uh, we kind of got a good impression of it. Well, there uh, there was a girl there who who um, hit. I was picking her up one day, and they were in the um, cafeteria, and I saw the little girl hit Remy with a tablet. And I, I don't care about I don't care about that stuff. Like if my kids get in little fights and get cuts and scrapes at school, I don't think it's anyone's fault. I don't like get mad about it. Maddox dove himself into a soccer goal one time playing football and bust himself up. I had to go get him from the school because he was he knocked himself out. I don't I'm not mad at anybody. I'm not even mad if they if someone else like the kid was hurting her. They're three. Or two she was two. I don't care. I didn't even say anything. The teacher took the tablet from the it was the teacher's tablet, the little girl was holding it. She took it from her, said bye. Anyway, it comes to find out that girl was hitting and biting people. She bit Remy broke the skin, crushed her skin on her hand, and Remy balled up her hand and would not open it for a week. And this girl was apparently hitting and biting people, and poor Remy can't talk. She can't stick up for herself. We're sending her to school every day, and she was crying and crying and crying. We kept waiting for her to get over it and get used to going to school. She was not getting used to going to school. She was going somewhere where someone was biting her and hitting her, and she couldn't explain it. She didn't know why mommy and daddy are dropping her off there. So we... We explained the problem. They say, we're going to take care of it. We're going to put someone one-on-one with that girl. Well, they didn't. And then the girl bit somebody else. And then we were dropping Remy off while we were finding all this out. And the girl went over and tried to bite Remy while Kristen was dropping her off. And Kristen was leaving and she called me. And I said, no, no, go back in and get her. We're done. We're done there. And we explained. We said, she needs. we need to feel like she's safe here. And uh, we're not going to bring her here. You know, and that that daycare made the decision that they would rather instead of telling that person like, hey, look, your kid's been biting and hitting people for for weeks. They got to go. They were willing to hurt and lose every other potential customer. You know, even if you didn't give a shit about people getting hurt, you know, just financially. That one girl's tuition and the tuitions of anyone that 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 girl's parents told, hey, they kicked her out over some bullshit. All right, that t- girl's that is going to be far outweighed by every tuition of every kid she runs off, and every person that ever talks to us about that daycare will never go there. And anyone else that that knows that even hears the story, you hear that story one time, you're like, oh, we're never going there. Um, so that experience sort of shaped my outlook on this. 
Another one is that as a personal trainer, I've not had to do this often. I've only had to do this three times. Three times I've had to do this where I fired a personal training client, where they were like non-compliant. They weren't doing what I needed them to do. They weren't showing up. They weren't, they were, they were backing out of sessions and they were canceling sessions. And, and the, my choices were to continue to bill them and just say, screw it, or to fire them as clients. So I've, I'd fired some client. I'd fired individual clients before for non-compliance with their program. I had had this experience with Remy. Um, I'd, I'd been in situations that prepared me to have that difficult conversation. And so now I understand why so many school owners, gym owners, senseis, and coaches have trouble having that conversation. Because how many of you have, have known a guy like this that was hurting everybody? And I've seen this in so many places. There'll be a guy that's like hurt lots of people. Like they're like, hey, do you know so-and-so? And it's like, yeah, he broke my leg. Um, uh, and someone's like, oh, really? Yeah, he broke my my um, my um wrist. And someone's like, oh, yeah, I heard he busted somebody so-and-so up. And it's all about the same guy. That guy doesn't know he's that guy all the time. So you go to talk to him, and um, he doesn't get it. So the the conversation becomes extremely hard because you're trying to you're trying to fuss at somebody for hurting people. You're trying to talk to an adult too. That's a big problem. You're trying to have a conversation that you shouldn't have to have with an adult with an adult. And sometimes we you have a skewed perspective because it seems so easy and simple to you. Just do this. Just do this. And they don't get it. And that conversation is really hard. Then you have the issue of money. You have the issue of a person who's paying you. They're your customer. And uh, you got to get rid of a customer. But if you don't cut that out, if you don't cut out that that infection or that disease or that cancer, if you don't cut that out, it's going to infect and spread and damage everything around it. It's been my experience that most people don't realize how hard they're going. And I've kind of walked back. I used to have a, until very recently, I had a really, really strong, strong, strong aversion and opinion and response to people that I felt were sparring hard with me or with anyone that I cared about, anyone that I trained with, anyone that I trained. Um, so people don't really know how hard they're getting, how hard they're going, but I, I kind of don't care. I kind of don't care. Even if it's 100% innocent, they don't have a clue. They didn't mean to do any of it. I kind of don't care. It's, it's not worth it to me to like try to reach. You're, I want to reach and help as many people as possible. And if you need a lot more help, I want to give it to you. But if helping you is going to keep me from helping five other people or 10 other people or 20 other people, I'm not going to do it. So he said, well, if I'm going too hard, I guess I'll get out of here. I guess I can't train here. You know, he said no hard feelings. I kind of, I kind of obviously, I obviously wished I'd handled it. I wished I'd handled the end differently. I wished I'd been harder for longer. (laughs) There it went. I wished I had been more assertive earlier instead of trying to be easygoing and friendly and trying to like bring them along. You can always relax your rules. Uh, you know, I kind of I kind of started my kids program when I was trying to build the kids program. I wasn't very strict. Um and getting stricter on kids that are already training there is proven tough. You know, you can always relax. It's harder to tighten your expectations and requirements. But I understand how difficult it can be for gym owners because I've had the conversation where I'm like, hey, you guys know that this guy's hurting people. He's sending people to the hospital. This is happening all the time. Why don't you get rid of this guy? In fact, the last guy I know I trained with that was hurting everybody and everybody knew it and he was an asshole, no one kicked him out until he rolled with the owner of that gym 
And the owner of that gym told him, hey, chill out, dude. And he was like, this is practice. I thought I'm practicing. And uh, then he was like, all right, get your stuff and get out. But he had to he had to hurt the owner. You know? I don't know. I don't know the right way. I don't know how many warnings if you could institute a policy. You know, because it's such a subjective thing. Because hard to me is it might be different than hard to you. If I have a soccer mom who does like to check kicks and take some contact and do some, you know, uh, pad holding drills and like she'll block a kick and catch kicks and she'll do that stuff. But she doesn't care to fight and she doesn't care to get hit in the nose and she doesn't want to find out what it's like to get hit in the face. She's not interested in that. Her her 50% is different than my 50%. And my 50% is different than Jim's 50%. Jim at 50% would, I, I, I would go to the hospital. Jim at 50% would, he'd punch me in the chest, my heart would stop. <laughs> you know? Uh, Cliff at 50% is scary. Cliff at 50% uh, is beating up 98% of the people on the planet. That train. You know? <laughs> um, so everyone's 50% is different. So it's so hard to create like a hard and fast policy. But I don't know. This went on, I would, I would, I can guarantee that we had five formal talks about it. And then, uh, you know, so let's look at what are some solutions? What do you think some solutions are? Definitely not a troll says, I thought the solution to this was kicking the person with your best student. Maybe you mean like pairing them with the best? And I would do that. And they would, they would beat the shit out of him. <laughs> um, but also him being an older guy not a not a huge guy not the best guy sometimes they would just control him not really beat him beat him you know what I mean um, Adam Moe says I don't know man if someone spars hard they gotta get a taste of their own medicine I don't you know I used to think that but I kind of I don't know I struggle with that I have some other stories coming up we're gonna do a podcast soon on guys the uh guys that um have come into the gym and to spar with me and uh we have a, I have a few stories about guys that have come to uh spar with me and sam s says would you not just have a hard and fast rule three formal talks and gone yeah i th- i think so i and what what why i struggled to do that is because like I said, it's so subjective. So I'm sort of understanding. Sam S., I don't know why you retracted your comment. It was excellent. I think three strikes you're out. I th- or any number of... Th- what I what I run into is like they're still not... Uh, yeah, Sam, I think three strikes is great. Um, the, the problem that I was running into is maybe... See, since he doesn't understand, but I think if you don't understand, you should be erring on the side of barely touching people. I think you should like just barely tip tap and let them tell you, hey, you know, you can go a little harder. Mickey Mouse says giving them a taste just escalates it worse. Yeah, and some guys just like doing that shit. They just like fighting. Mickey Mouse, I think you're exactly right. I don't think that that is the uh, that is the uh, that is the answer. Um, but I've I've trained with guys who who've hurt me, and I've known that they hurt other people. And they keep hurting people and keep hurting people and keep hurting people. And uh, and they just keep getting to train. So I, f- I feel bad for school owners because that is a hard situation to be in un- until they really think about it. And then I stop. F- you know, I think if you put any amount of thought into it, um, it, it becomes an easier decision. And I think why they struggle with it is because you can't take a coach or instructor or sensei and also make him a business owner and school owner. Like you have to wear like sometimes those those two those two uh, jobs have different missions. Like they have different goals and different standards. They have different priorities. <sighs> Connor McDowell says being assertive earlier was completely right. Yeah, I should have just not. I should have been more. I I I was too easy for too long but do you guys want to hear about some some guys coming in the gym (laughs) trying to get over on me 
I think I might do a whole video on these topics soon, like a video video. But it's fun to talk about these things now. Also, if you want to be a caller, if you want to call in, make sure you go over to the Podbean app. Follow Icy Mike Imperfect on Podbean. That way you can hear old episodes or listen to them in the car or whatever. But you can also use your phone to call in and actually be heard on the air to give your two cents or to ask questions or troll me or whatever. You want to talk shit? Whatever. But uh, if you want to call in, just go get on the Podbean app. And we're bringing in Slide Carnivore. Slide Carnivore is live. Hello, Mike. I'd just like to start off by saying like, I, I love your content. I've been following you for years and love and respect from the Great British Isles. Oh, thank you, man. It must be late over there. Yeah, it's 20 to 3. Oh, man. Well, thank you for staying up late and hanging out with me. <laughs> Don't worry, Mike. Uh, I'm usually up at these times anyway. And, uh, it, you know, listening to, to some of the the knowledge that you've got it is just <laughs> it's great it's refreshing to hear people not just talk out of their ass the whole time i don't know man i don't feel very knowledgeable because i don't feel like i handle this situation very well do you have any what do you think what do you think about that personally um i i dropped it in the comments uh, good old-fashioned pro wrestling receipt has worked for me in the past I'm, but as I'm, you say I'm that familiar. can tend to escalate things Yeah, and that only protects me if I'm, or you, if you're better than the guy. You know what I mean? If you've got an ounce more skill or a little bit more muscle mass. Right. If you you would win a real fight, that's the only thing that's (laughs) not, you know what I mean? But what that does is you got to send him to the next guy. What if I got a guy that's, this is his first month of sparring? He's been training for four or five months and he's just started coming to sparring. And, you know, I send this guy, you know, I just gave this guy the receipt. And then he goes down there and takes it out on that guy, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think one of the best ways really is to get people understanding how to uh, control their power on the pads first. Yeah. Some people, everything they do is hard. Everything. They hit the bag hard. They hit the pads hard. They hit their partners hard. And every strike is hard. You can't do that. Yeah, you, you, you just can't. And uh, sometimes for those people, it, it can be brought down to they were trained wrong to start with. Uh, I've sparred with a lot of people from different backgrounds. And what I tend to find is boxers just punch harder in sparring. Oh, uh, yeah, boxing. I just like to. I'm not a boxer. Boxing sparring is terrifying. Boxing sparring looks like a boxing <laughs> match to me. I don't understand the difference. Yeah. They no, say it's just, different. They... I don't. I'm like, I would. I watch them hit each other, and I'm like, I can't imagine hitting a person harder than what you're doing. Like, I don't know. I don't get it. Boxing sparring is pretty rough. Now, that's funny that you say that because I know the guys that this guy trained with, and that's how they are. They, like, beat the shit out of each other. That's just how they train. Uh, I'm fam- they're, I've they're trained with them. they just grow old with brain injuries. That's <laughs> And a lot of them, yeah. And and now, what, and what's always, what you always run into when you try to tell people that oh that's not the right way to train you're usually talking to guys who are like at least crushing local cans you know what i mean they're at least local can crushers or like they're winning locally or regionally and it gets hard to tell them hey the way you guys are training is wrong uh even though the guys at your gym are beating up the guys at every other gym in the region you know it's hard (laughs) it's hard to tell them that they're doing it wrong yeah i mean you you could use the the muay thai um idea because uh, you, you're not you're not going to have a, a, a even semi-professional muay thai fight i want to spar with you twice if you spar hard the first time yeah they, they like to play and it just works better when they get in the ring because they're not flinching as much right they're, they're, they're ready to get hit and especially if your guys are fighting a lot like if you're fighting a lot you have plenty of context you know you get how fights really work this your your training is supposed to be like practice and i think it should sometimes be fun people think that's crazy but i think it should sometimes be fun you said playing i like to think of sparring as playing i like to think of it as roughhousing with my friends 
Yeah, it should be, and that's why. Uh, and I think you've covered this a few times in the past. Like uh, BJJ is just one of the best ways to get good fast at a martial art because yeah. they roll hard almost every time from the beginning. Yeah, and you're just not hurting each other because you respect the tap. <laughs> you're 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 not you're not acutely injuring each other. Typically, you are. Yeah, you are giving each other long term chronic injuries. <laughs> <laughs> But that that can't be um, avoided in any martial art, really. If you've applied yourself, you are going to injure yourself over time. Yeah, I don't doubt it. Yeah, um, I I came from a karate background originally, and I like the way that you know we sparred there. And I know you have an issue with the the, the skate away karate style. <laughs> um, but I seem to, uh, I'm under the impression that it works really well on the street. It's worked really well for me on the uh, street because I, uh, I, actually, I tend not to get backed into a corner. Yeah. Well, if you're mobile and if you can sting, a, so a street fight, if, actually, you know what? When you say that, you got to remember a lot of shit I say is hyperbolic. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just me. Like, I actually think hit and run one good shot, bam, in and out. For self-defense, I actually think that's super effective because a lot of times your attacker might not be 100% committed. He might not be totally married to the idea of fighting with you. And if you just get in, sting him, and you're out, and he's like, oh, shit, that might make him, you know, move and on. And if, if they are fully intent on hurting you and they run into a kick, that can also switch the light off like, yeah. okay, no, maybe not, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> maybe next time. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you calling in, man. Thank you so much. It was an honor, Mike. All right, you, thank you, you, uh, man. you enjoy the grayness of your beard, bro. <laughs> All right, thanks, brother. <laughs> Later. Yeah. All right, let's bring on Reese. What's hey, up, Reese? Again, Reese? What's good? I was uh, just in the chat talking about boxing sparring since you said, since uh, off of what you said, I should say. But uh, in boxing sparring, it's more technical, but some gyms, you know, like Mayweather Gym and stuff like that, they go hard to really just show off and prove a point. But in most gyms, boxing sparring is like technical. I, I did some more thinking. There's a lot more pop, pop trading. And it's like, I do jab, cross hook, you come back, whatever. And then I come back. It's more like that than anything else. I've done some boxing. Really I've done some boxing hard. only sparring with some boxers at other gyms. And when I first started doing it, it was way worse. Yeah. It was it was way worse when I first started because I didn't get it and I wasn't really that great at just boxing. Well, when I figured out what I think the deal is, I think you can go a little harder in boxing than you can in, say, kickboxing or Muay Thai because there's like less – there's only a couple things you got to worry about. You know what I mean? You're mm -hmm. just like mm -hmm. if you can keep your hands up, that's kind of yeah. – I mean, yeah, you can get – now people could be like, you get hit. Most you, people, do, do, do. What I'm saying is like you're not going to get head kicked. You're not going to get kneed. Yeah. You're not going to get leg kicked. You don't have to worry about mm. – uh, you know, you only have to cover head, body, head, body, head, body. That's yeah, what you got to cover. You know it's going to be punches. The, yeah, continue, continue. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say something about No, go ahead. Yeah. Mostly in sparring when it does get hard, it's mostly because – one fighter did something to the other fighter that that he didn't like was, that he didn't like so he's like okay you want to go there i'll do this and then it just escalates into a real fight and that's what you pretty much see like on the youtube when it's like knocked out and sparring most yeah. of them is just all oh, dang they let their hands they let the hand go like you know somebody has a big right hand yeah they just automatically throw it not with any power but they throw it with full speed and it's like dang Nothing you can do about that, but it's mostly technical. It's not that dangerous. But Reagan, I had a hard time in BJJ. Reagan the gym I went to. Reagan Moy moves and drills says boxing sparring is too hard. That fucking headgear is open season in boxing gyms. Yeah, they. No, they it get, depends on what headgear you have to. Well, no, There's what he's some saying. Headgear that cut off. Uh, no, that listen. Cuts off, like vision. Yeah, vision. listen. What he's saying. What I think he's saying. Actually, I think is that. Um, Reagan, Reagan. I want to say like Troy Reagan or Trevor Reagan. Tr T Reagan, Muay Thai fighter. Is that you? 
I think I know who you are. Um, what he's saying is when people get the headgear on, they think they can go, they, they, they view it as they get like too confident when you're wearing headgear. It's like people oh. think that they can't get. Oh no. Well then that's on the gym that he's at. Yeah. Most of the gyms that I've been at, once you put on the headgear, you take it even lighter because people know that you can't see. Yeah. It sucks wearing the headgear. I get hit way vision. more in headgear than when I'm not wearing it. Yeah. Cause headgear. your peripheral vision is just off. My like head feels of... slower. I'm like hotter. I'm getting more tired. Yeah. It's the hella hot. And especially when you have on leather ones. Oh man. Yeah. That's yeah, but my one and BJJ where I almost got injured was my second day in, and it was just he was the same height as me, but he had like broader shoulders than me. He was a wrestler, yeah. And when we were rolling, after the first two like seconds of like you know just hand fighting, and then he got on the inside, and then I went to go step around him, he just instantly just you know smashed double leg me, yeah. And then I had to scramble up, and I, it was just a bunch of scrambling. He threw, like, he tried to come in for another double leg, almost hit me in the face with his knee. And I was like, dang, why is he going so hard? Yeah. And then you hear the coach saying, yo, go light, go light. And he was like, all right, all right. And then just again and again, just yeah, like, I don't know that blast okay. double. You, I'm like, People what? tell you, okay, I'll go light. And then you're like, that's light? That's light. <laughs> Yeah, so and I just realized it was just because he was a wrestler, so I had to step it up. I yeah. had to try to strength my way in, but then that just made it harder for me because as soon as I tried to do some strength stuff like he was doing, I just got choked out. So yeah. It was just, you know, it was unfair. Yeah. And I feel like that's when you get hurt the most, when it's not when it's not a fair, like, you know, skill gap. Yeah. Like once there's a fair skill gap, there's really not that much injury that could happen. Yeah. Well, all right. Thank you, Reese. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, man. All right. Let's bring on Sword Tune. Sword Tune. Oh, hello. Hello. Is this working? Yeah, it's working. You're here. You're live. All right, perfect. This everyone is can hear you. I've used. Oh my god, that's terrifying. Yeah, everyone. Uh, Two hundred and fifty-six people are listening to you right now. Don't say anything dumb. All right. Uh, well, again, just like the first uh, call, I just want to say I really love your content. I think you're probably one of the funniest like guys in the martial arts genre, I guess. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, man. Yeah. yeah. So I think just going to piggyback off of what uh, Reese was talking about before. I've like kind of – I come from like a striking background, really mixed with everything, like a bit of Muay Thai, boxing, um, Wing Chun – um ashamedly <laughs> and then but i recently tried to do uh, some more grappling wrestling and so um near where i used to live there's this um gym they had an open mat room and the, uh, these guys both bjj players and wrestlers came in and you know it was rolling a lot um without like someone watching us we we're just kind of responsible for our own safety and then yeah that's a problem. Yeah, but go I mean, ahead. Yeah, it was. It was actually. It was like surprisingly, we were all like pretty much pretty good about it until it was like late one night. There was only like three or four of us, and this guy I'm wrestling with, he's um, a high school wrestler. He just wants to do some submissions. He only knows how to do the um, double wrist lock or the kimura, and then mm -hmm. he he goes hard, but like no one like said anything about it because. Like, they're all, like, purple belt BJJ. They, they, they it, know how to handle it. Yeah, and you know what? It's hard to say something, and I think that's what what I was getting at earlier is I get I get why people have a hard time saying it because if I'm a, I'm a grown-ass man that's supposed to know how to fight, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you're a grown-ass man, and you're supposed to know how to fight. And I don't, I don't – and I think you're – I'm going to be like, hey, man, you're going too hard. You know, and not verbalizing it. I actually had uh, an incident where uh, – I had a training partner that told me, you know, he kind of turned up and went, started going hard on me. And I was like, yo, what's the deal? He's like, man, you're throwing them, them hard-ass right hands and you're trying to head kick me and shit. Now, granted, he said I was trying to head kick him. I never landed a head kick. I was just picking my foot up. You know, he just got, he just got gun shy oh. <laughs> about it. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like I did head kick yeah. him. He just felt like, like one was coming. You know what I mean? But he said right. I was throwing these hard-ass right hands and – uh and he was like way better than me, and then he he beat the shit out of me. You know what I mean? And I was like, yeah. well, why didn't you just say, "Hey, you're punching me too hard"? 
And then I thought, oh, because uh, a grown man who's better than me at fighting and is bigger than me doesn't want to say, hey, little guy that I'm better than, could you not punch me so hard? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird thing. Like, the, the ego takes over it's, the safety. It's ego, and it's, and it's yeah. bullshit, but I do get it because I've been there myself. Yeah. But what happened to this guy? Yeah. So this, it was, so it, it's kind of the the opposite. The guy that he and he rolled with me, and uh, I could take his his um his energy. But then this other guy was like a BJJ. He was a white belt, um, and so he's rolling with him the same way he's rolling with purple belts. And yeah, this they guy, don't have. Dude, it yeah. it drives me nuts when people don't have the sensitivity. One of the issues when I ran into this when I ran into this guy. And I had this issue. I said, I asked him at one point, I said, hey, can you not feel the difference between what I'm doing to you and what you're doing to me? And he was like, no. I was like, okay. Oh. They don't have the sensitivity to realize what they're getting. I've had, I've had, brown, I've had Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu brown belts that outweigh me by 70 pounds, like, like neck cranking me and like rear naked, <laughs> oh, rear geez. naked jaw breaking me. You know what I mean? Like, why are you doing, <laughs> like, can, do you feel that this is necessary like do you need to do this to win you know you could just like yeah mush me it's... and i go across the room right yeah something about i think if they're they're bigger it's just harder i guess i mean not it's not an excuse not to go easy but it's like they're kind of like oh is this easy enough and you with the smaller guys like uh no <sighs> yeah i've never i don't dude i don't know yeah. But anyway, so, continue anyways, onward. Sorry. Yeah, he, he 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 puts this guy in. He puts this guy in a Kimura and uh, does it like he says he does it as hard as he does it to me or all the other guys. And I, I mean, no reason for him to lie about that. And then this guy like immediately cusses him out so hard. He screams. He drops the f bomb and it echoes through the whole room. Luckily, there's like three of us there, so like no one really yeah. gave a shit. But like he starts saying like. Like holy fucking shit, man! Go easy on that. What the hell are you doing? He, yeah. And this guy, I mean, he's he was like he's he was um, uh, college freshman, really nice uh, guy, really respectful, and he just has this look of total like shock and confusion because he he didn't know nobody wrong. else. Yeah, no, nobody else said that that was well. Here's a high he, level of intensity. Well, here's here's what happened to him. What, there's things that people don't understand that they're building up when they're training. Bone density, yeah. muscle density, resilience, mental fortitude, composure. These are all things that don't get talked about a lot as being built up. Your arm and that white belt's arm are not the same. Even if you were the same size and the same age and maybe even yeah. could like bench the same and do the same number of pull-ups – your ligaments and bones and tendons are not the same if you've been getting if you've been getting put in kimuras and getting your ass out of them for months and months and months and years and years your bones and ligaments and tendons are stronger and more resilient and more capable of withstanding pressure when you put a little new white belt's arm in a kimura that little noodle is flopping up he's going to be like tickling the back of his own head quickly yeah. and feeling that burning tearing sensation in his shoulder and freaking the fuck out you know what i mean and doesn't have yeah. to he doesn't yeah, yeah definitely yeah it's the same with like uh people's necks you know what i mean T and taking punches mm -hmm. you know uh getting kicked in the body there are people that are much bigger than me that can bench more than me but when you kick them they're like ow and you're just kicking them light and like yeah if you they just you, you build up your resilience at the same time as you're building up your technique because while you're practicing it people are practicing it on you yeah yeah so i mean i kind of talked to, to this guy afterwards i was trying to we rolled again and like he's the kind of he was like a really good wrestler in high school like even with guys who are like purple belts like if he wants to hold on down, oh dude Stop everything. Oh. Everybody stop everything. All right. I'm reading a comment. I need to scroll back and make sure that someone, please tell me there's some context to this comment. Darren Chan says, I mean, you can use Wing Chun to pass guard because you know flexibility and technique. Wait, what? 
What? <laughs> Who said that? You can use Wing Chun to pass guard. Are we talking about... Uh, what kind of... I've never... I mean, I, I mean... Uh, hold on, buddy. I'm trying to find some context. That maybe, mean, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm not reading the right thing. I, I hope you're not. Forms, defense form. Oh, no. Can, can I just say, as someone who uses Wing Chun in my boxing, because I, I, I do too. I pass someone's guard. Yeah. I do too. I never. Wonders, but I think it works better in passing guard for breaking posture. Percent. What? Somebody help me. Help me. Somebody. Okay. If it's a P someone doing BJJ, there's sensitivity. If you want to talk about the technique and the sensitivity. The skill that they have with their leg is not going to beat out whatever skill you have with your Wing Chun sticky hands. It's, it's just not going to happen. If they want to keep you in guard, they're going to keep you in guard. Sword Tune, I hear you talking, and I'm sure what you're saying is right. But I just can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Um, someone explain that to me. Someone, ex someone get on call. I want to yeah, guess. someone explain that to me. Wing Darren Wing Chun for me standing grappling defense might be trapping. What are you talking about? You're standing there trying to hold you in guard, and you're gonna pass their guard standing because of oh what like they're trying to do like I don't know, man. Or... I, 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 I scrolled up and I didn't see anything that. That made it make any more sense, dude. All right. I don't know. Anyway, interesting story about your guy, man. <laughs> but the yeah. the point I, the point I take away from it, what you were saying is he didn't know. He one hundred percent didn't have a clue. This kid that he was going with thought he was trying to kill him. You know, he thought he was yeah. trying to take his arm home with him. But the guy yeah. doing the Kimura doesn't have a fucking clue. Yeah. And. We're we're rolling like nogi, so he doesn't have his belt on. There's no way to know what belt everyone is at. Yes, yes. I make the mistake, dude. I get wrecked in nogi. I get wrecked in nogi because I don't have a belt on, and like I can do a reasonable impression of a a higher belt for like a few seconds. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh yeah. If I'm on yeah. top, I'm good, buddy. If I'm on top, you can't tell. But dude, I hit my back. My guard gets passed instantly. I get cross-faced into oblivion. I get smashed, flattened, and and squeezed for the next five minutes. You know what I mean? Like I'm yeah. not getting up. Yeah. And they're and they're like they're desperately. People will be like straight, like just grinding me into paste because they know I can't let this guy get up. Because I saw him earlier. He did a he did a really flipping sweet triangle or sweep or something. <laughs> I was like, that was it. That was my one thing. Don't be fooled. I suck. <laughs> or maybe they can they can feel those powerful muscles on you maybe like, like, oh yeah, yeah they, like... they feel my man-sized grip <laughs> they're like oh this guy's yeah. a real... <laughs> fuck you, you know, sword most... dude <laughs> <laughs> the most the the saddest thing i like tapped to it was just because i gassed out it was with the same same wrestler um did you pass out did you get you tap out to his side control pressure no, I tapped out to his sweaty shirt, like got caught up in my like mouth and nose. Oh. And it was just so disgusting. I was like, that's I'm I'm good. I'm I've had a guy <laughs> I've been stuck in a guy's like basically his man cleavage. <laughs> <laughs> Crypto Pirate seventeen seventy six with a super chat says he meant Wing Chun chicken. You can offer it to your opponent and he'll let you pass guard while he eats. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, some Wing Chun chicken. Well, Sword Tune, I appreciate you calling in. Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much. All right. Look at this. Look at this. We got a celebrity here in the building. We're bringing on the one, the only, Sensei Seth. Maybe not. <laughs> oh hey sorry i'm here oh, i'm here there you go i like to show up fashionably late yeah to your own you, you called in yeah oh <laughs> me calling uh in. uh sword tune joe antal in the Podbean chat says why didn't you just eat his shirt 
<laughs> Just eat his shirt, dude. Just chew the shirt up. All right, Seth, what are you here to tell me? What are you here to do? Oh, you know, um, what I announcements just wanted do you to... have? Anything interesting well, coming up? Well, first off, I, I I do have a bit of information for you for the Wing Chun. Um, okay. I think technically speaking, he was talking about doing Wing Chun to someone's leg, mm-hmm. which immediately turns it into uh, Drum Chun. Drum Chun. <laughs> 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 that's all i'm here folks uh hey yeah, he'll be here I'm all here week for. make I'll sure you tip your bartenders <laughs> <laughs> any super chats to come in for the next five minutes are now mine because of that one thank oh you oh my god You're ve- <laughs> oh my god oh drum chun <laughs> if you're doing wing chun to his leg it's drum to his chun. Leg. yeah yeah oh man dude Hey, I did a I did a video today. Did you see today's video it was on like pairing and hand trapping and stuff? Mm-hmm. And I already had a couple guys comment about how like my my structures weren't right and I wasn't doing it right. You know what I mean? Like that's not the right, right way. To, you know, I'm like, your foot's not at 122 degrees, dude. And then on the last one, <laughs> the one from um, Sunday. I showed uh, like a like just a cross face over the top. When they have like a collar tie, you just cross face over the top. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? When you can't get inside position. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just stuff like this. People will comment. Like a guy commented. He's like, can you show me this? Can you actually apply this to anyone and show me it working on a person? And I was like, would you also accept the thousands of Muay Thai, MMA, kickboxing, and boxing matches where people fighters of all levels did this to fighters of all other levels like would yeah, you right. like do you think i invented it did i invent i invented the one technique i didn't invent that i didn't invent cross-facing right yeah but people what, ask they're like oh, oh yeah like that would ever work my favorite one and like i get where it's coming from especially when you're new but my favorite one is when i show a technique with one like in southpaw with my left leg and somebody's like hey can you do that one in orthodox with your right leg please yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> just, I am. Um, like, switch it. What? Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. Uh, one funny one. I did a video on uh, leg kicks in a street fight, and I advocated posting your hand during the leg kick, which, you know, we and both of us like to post the hand when we leg kick anyway. Yeah. I advocated posting the hand while you leg kick, and I got countless comments about how that would never work. And I was like, yeah. and you know, I didn't make that up. And like, that, like tons of people do that all the time in every in every fighting sport where there's kicking, right? That that's a thing yeah, but, that people do, right? A ton of them yes, said that it, while I did it, they would just um, punch me in the body on the side where the arm was posting. Like they'd hit me in the yeah. body there while I was doing that. But well, a lot I'm of them just said completely still. Yeah, I was so confused. I was like, do they think I made this up? I don't it's know. In the title. <laughs> I, I really do think that that like when whenever people some people see a thumb, like a title, they're like, okay, that's it. I that's the only information I'm gonna take in. I'm gonna go comment now. Well, so and that title Which where I, I said get, I, I, I guess. invented the technique. I think I did invent that. Yeah. Have you the punching your own glove? No, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Where you like try and jam it into their yeah. neck. Yeah. I invented that. I'm pretty sure I invented that. It seems very you, yeah. I'm saying I haven't seen it anywhere else. Right. I've invented shit before mm. and then found it somewhere else. I've never seen that. What's it called? What do you, what do you what's the name for it? Shit, I don't know. Straight it's, it's, asshole. It's got a I'm I'm gonna call it Dude, Hammer and Nail. It, hammer and Nail? That's not bad. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean that's what you're doing. Hey, Cliff told me straight up, stop doing that shit. <laughs> hey, don't ever do that to me. Yeah, he didn't he didn't he didn't counter it, he didn't do anything about it, he didn't address it, we didn't discuss it, he didn't offer ideas, he didn't tell me why it wouldn't work. He didn't mm-hmm. um he didn't do he didn't really do anything except hey, yeah, chill on that. <laughs> <laughs> like Look, we're just like not you made, you made your point. That works. That's that's like sick. Just stop. I think it's like in there with like uh, you know, can opener trying to open somebody's guard up with a can opener. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Like, okay, yeah, okay. Or, you know, we've talked before on, on our videos about when people watch a spar, they don't they know that we don't leg kick each other a lot. Right. You know, like, yeah, we get it. Yeah. We could, like, we could, it would just be us leg kicking each other over and over again. Yeah. Um, I, speaking of comments, I recently put out um, the ranking, the tier, the styles video. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, that might be the most similar video comment wise that I've seen to some of your videos that I've had yet. And oh, it started going... off n- not that way at all. And then yeah. you could tell it got shared to like other oh, yeah. people. Welcome, welcome. Dude, when you were last here, you guys, little insider tip. When Sensei Seth was last here, whenever Sensei Seth comes to visit, we do a little like, uh, we do a lot of martial arts, we do a lot of YouTube, but we also do, I do a bit of like a, we do like a consultation. Where we sit down and we, we look at his gym. <laughs> yeah. Do you not yeah, want me to tell fair. people this? No, no, no. That it's it's very accurate. Yeah. It's and it's super serious. You know what's funny is I'm gonna tell the story, people are gonna wait for a punchline. You mm-hmm. know, they're like, they really do that? Like they probably oh, figure yeah. we're just like trying to like make martial arts moves with frisbees or like like right. learn how to yeah. f- and learn how to fight hamsters or like, you know, we just whatever dumb shit that we're making <laughs> videos about. No, we literally sit down. We open up the YouTube analytics and stuff. We look. Seth pulls up his. I pull up mine. I explain. I look back where I was at, what month I was at a similar number of subscribers, and we talk about like what I did differently. Like we do a mm-hmm. whole like a lesson, a YouTube lesson, you know? Yeah, we go full data nerd. Yeah, and uh, do I? We do like a little consultation. Yeah. Um, Seth Seth teaches me sidekicks, and I teach him how the YouTube analytics. You know what I mean? Like how YouTube works. <laughs> and uh. Yeah, right. What we figured out, I fig- remember I said, I said, where you're at, you're like one month before where my channel went, mm-hmm. you know, and when my channel went, that's when all those comments started showing up. Yeah, no, it, it's, it makes, I had one guy who was like, he went off on how traditional martial arts, like he called me first off the very strictly traditional martial artist mm-hmm. and then continued to say how I, uh, my I wasn't ready for a real fight because I was so traditional and I stuck to Kata so closely. And I was like, okay, cool. Well, so th- this you is are what doing, it's like to get. You are doing Katas in your like intro of your channel. Yeah, that is true. That is true. That's I true. think it's funny. Do you know what the funniest thing about that is? I think it's funny in your intro, you have this moment where on the beat, like the beat hits and you like mm-hmm. throw this like chambered punch from your hip. Yeah. With like two 12 year olds behind you. Uh huh. Yep. And you drop it on the beat like it's this super dramatic moment. <laughs> <laughs> you drop it on the beat like, like it's going down. <laughs> That's the coolest you will ever see. You, two you put it on the beat a, like adult. it is, like it is the coolest thing you've done. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I guess I didn't even think about that. It I hits was like the beat hard. By- it, it does. It hits the beat hard, but you're like standing mostly upright, throwing a punch from your hip with two 12 year old purple belts behind you. Like, yep. out of all the stuff that I've done, that's, right. that's the that's the beat drop. Yeah, let's update that moment in the intro. I've been meaning to talk to you about that. We need to fix that moment in the intro. I know you're proud actually, of the kids. I know you're no, proud I of wanted, your traditional martial arts roots. Anyway. Yeah, I know that there are things you're proud of, but you put it on the beat like it's something I'm supposed to get really excited about. Did it get you really excited? No, it looks like you're you're teaching kids their first kata. <laughs> they're, re- they're getting ready for competition. They're ready to go out there and destroy. A kata okay? competition. No one gets destroyed. <laughs> I got destroyed. I'm terrible at kata. Hey, you know my first forms competition? It was kind of crazy, man. Uh, I did one. I was 11 or 12, maybe 13. I was a brown belt. Mm-hmm. And um, no, no. I was a new black belt. Oh. It was my first. I think I just got my black belt. I just got my honorary black belt or your. No, my Kuxuwan black belt. Um, Because you have an honorary yellow belt. My Kuxuwan black belt. That's not honorary. It's it's dishonorary. Dishonorary. Uh, (laughs) No, uh, I remember I did because I did the brown belt form. But I think I was a black belt. But I think I just like just got my black belt like the month before, so I had to do the. So I was doing the brown belt form. I could do the brown belt form. I had that option. Yeah. Um, I did the brown belt form. There was a sixth degree black belt um, judge, 
a my instructor was one of the judges. He was a third degree black belt, and then a and then a first degree black belt judge. The sixth degree black belt judge gave me a nine point six. Mm. My instructor gave me a nine point four. Mm. Right, and these are the yeah. the nine point six was the highest. Score I'm, I'm going to tell you something that's really going to hurt your feelings in a, in a couple minutes here about grading and belts. And then the new anyway, guy, man. this new fat little mullet-headed guy <laughs> who's a hey, first-degree black the, belt, he gave me a... word, Mike. What? <laughs> what <laughs> F word? Said, what did I say? You said, you said fat. I, oh, I just, my God. Thank yeah. God. I thought I said... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I thought I said something else. He gave me an 8.9... <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even place. Yeah. Mm. And uh, the 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 sixth degree black belt, this Canadian guy, he looked at him and he looked at him like, are you fucking stupid? <laughs> and I was a kid, but I could see he was looking at the first degree black belt like, dude, did you not just say, like, listen, Seth, not to brag, but I was really fucking good at forms. You know what I mean? I was yeah. really good at them. And... Mine looked better. They said that mine looked better than in any, like they were the best for a non-Korean, you know, for if mm-hmm. I would add the non-Korean. <laughs> yeah, right. That was the best non-Korean. But he gave me 8.9 and I think it was, he didn't, he didn't know. I don't think he knew the form well enough to know how it was really supposed to look. You know what I mean? Cause I was doing things like, like he, he was probably still at that do everything as fast as you can phase. You know yeah. what I mean? Yep. Mm-hmm. But there was like certain there was certain speeds and cadences for each part, and your hands were supposed to be moving one speed, and your feet were supposed to be moving another speed. And I knew all that because I was a super nerd for this stuff. Mm-hmm. But I didn't even place. It like hurt me, and I never competed in forms again. I've I've got a funny one of those too, where um, and you said you were going to hurt I, my feelings. Yeah. Oh yeah, I said I was going to hurt your feelings. Um, yep. Yeah. So the grading okay. systems for most of those uh, most of those tournaments come down to the judges like depending on which uh, belt ranking you are, Mm -hmm. they put you in like a, you have a bracket of what you can score in. So like purple belts, they talk to all three judges and they're like, all right, look, we're going to score them between 6.2. Oh, like they, there's no way they can get a 10. And 7.8. Right. Like they can't get a 10. No. Or they can't get below a certain number. Right. So like there was a chance that for black belt, they were like, okay, anywhere between... 8.7 8.7 and 10. Yeah. Like, don't give anybody below an 8.7. Yeah. Don't give anybody. But the high, the highest six. ranking judge there gave me a 9.6, and that was the yeah. highest score given out for the day. Yeah, that's got. I mean, obviously, I, that's like a. That guy I definitely sucked. nailed that form. Like, I definitely <laughs> that nailed that form. The other guy. Yeah. Um, when I had done a most recent kata competition, which like I never did as a kid, I did one as an adult to like. Because my so my students were like, "Hey, uh, will you do you this?" You did with a kata us? competition as an adult. Yep, sure did. And, <laughs> okay. and guess what? The funniest part was that, that the it's already th- the funniest part. The funniest part <laughs> is when it happened. That's the funniest part. The first time I ever got recognized, this kid walks up to me. He's he's a black belt. He's like fourteen, and his his parents come up to me and they're like, "Hey, uh, our kid wants a picture with you." <laughs> we don't know I why. Was like, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, sick. Anyway, so the kid gets a picture of me. I go and judge for most of it, and then I like help my kids out with coaching. And then it's the end of the day. I had seen this kid who just asked for my picture do his kata, and it was really good. And I'm terrible at kata. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so this kid blows out the rest of his class, and then he's like, yeah, I'm just going to compete in the adults too, oh, Mike, no! just for fun. <laughs> Mike, this <laughs> So I came in second. No! This, this kid wasn't allowed to win a trophy because he was not in our age division. What? He wasn't allowed to win a trophy, so, get... so they gave... So the, somebody else already beat me. Actually, one of my good buddies already beat me. And then this kid had a higher score than I did, and I know he did. Yeah. But they didn't give him second because he's 14, he's which is like such a... Yeah, yeah. right. Anyway, yeah, so that kid definitely beat me. And I still gave him the trophy, but like... Yeah, it, I was going to say, he gets, he should get the trophy no matter what. Yeah, no, I gave him the trophy still. First of all, and, it's, the fact that there's adults competing for trophies and kata is funny anyway. <laughs> I mean, I, I get it. Like, some people want to do it recreationally. 
I get that. I'm, I'm, know, not, gonna, you I'm know, not gonna hate on it. I'm not actually, like, let me clarify. There, let me clarify because I'm looking like you know? a heel and I'm anything heel. but a heel. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's laughable that adults do kata competitions. Mm-hmm. I think it's laughable that Sensei Seth does kata competitions. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I'll take that one. I'll take that. If, one. if a guy is not capable, like, you know, uh, a guy who wants to compete at something and loves it and is passionate about it and is not capable of sparring or not interested in sparring or, yeah. you know, I, it's fine. I, I'm not super judgmental. I'm just judging you for doing that. No, yeah, that's – I get it. Actually, it's it's on YouTube, that Oof. that video. Oof. Yeah, and then and then me getting beat four to five by an ITF Taekwondo guy in point. Is on your channel? Oh, yeah. Oh, you're heading there right now, aren't you? <laughs> yikes what do i um, put in here <laughs> kata see, competition let me see it's an earlier video um kata, sensei da, seth da, da, da. sensei seth kata competition the, i would imagine that works karate competition weekend sensei seth's also, adventures uh, yep that's it also you can um you can go you can show people the intro now because a couple of people were like i haven't seen this intro or your the, intro the drop yeah the drop oh come on they have to know well if you how about this if you guys don't know just leave this podcast right i am about to take <laughs> off <laughs> oh that you yeah. love that you love that shot of you uh kicking that dude watch this oh it's my favorite it's uh, that's actually from this video perfect um let me see I'm, I'm that shot the right there of you and the kids, you're throwing the chambered punch. You've changed your intro to put that on the beat. Oh, it's not I? on the beat in this one. This is before you changed what's, it. What's what's on the beat in this one? Oh, the, the tree division. punch. That yeah. was way better. We, that was way better. way better. Way better. Yeah, for sure. You sitting in your car. Let me. Hey, YouTubers. I, hey, um, aspiring YouTubers, listen up. Free YouTube tip. Let me know in the comments if you do YouTube, right? Because I want to tell you something. Do you see this right here? See this guy right here sitting in his car? Not driving. Talking to a camera about martial arts? Almost never. Almost never should you do this. This is almost a never. Don't do this. I was, a, I was a vlogger back then, Mike. Don't do this. <laughs> okay, but the kata starts at 352, and then the point karate is right after that. Where I smoke no, this guy like four times, and then he beats me with five body punches. Shh, 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 shh. We're gonna watch it all together. <laughs> I, just so you know, I can't. I shut up. So, which is probably. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can call back after. I'm just gonna call back after. I'll see you guys in a second. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> What? Who are you punching? Who am I punching? Where did you get you? <laughs> I, I'm not Who sure you what you're referencing. Who are you punching? <laughs> Who are you Oh, is it done? Oh my god. Bro, has to the body. Why don't y'all put your hands up? What if somebody tries to actually punch or kick you? Watch, watch how many times I get touched in that. Oh, no, I'm not watching that. I can't do it. I can't. What? Come on. We'll do it another. Okay. Oh, you want to watch the point sparring? No, I can't. Yeah. I can't. I can't. It's less than a minute. Okay. Hold on. I need to recuperate. Okay. I need to recover. Oh my god.
Oh my god. <laughs> Ow. I tried to make it like a, an actual legit traditional kata that looked flashy enough to win and it just it just didn't work. Your little crescent kick to your hand. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's with the intention that I swept the the bunkai for that. Let me see if I remember. Listen, this. no, we did it too. I know what I know what it kick, is. You kick the inside of the leg and then you're pushing the back down. But yeah. Oh, yeah. it's a low because it looked low. Mm-hmm. It is low. Oh, like you're, you're oh, pushing I, okay. Okay, the back so, of the yeah, so and you I, kick the instep. Oh, so we would we threw that high in our kata, ah, in see. our forms, like head height, like inside. Oh, wait, no, I know what you're talking about. And, you're talking about something different than I am. And um, we would do it, it was it was explained to me, it wasn't explained to me as boinkai, as boinkai, boinkai? Boinkai. Boinkai. <laughs> it wasn't explained <laughs> to me as a boinkai. Where's, where's it, was a, it was a means for us to be able to throw it hard, you know, yeah. and have a thing to stop it. Because if you throw an inside crescent kick hard and nothing's there, yeah, that's a weird. Your hips do a weird thing. You couldn't. I, I probably did it, yeah. throw it high when Bunkai probably should have had it go low, but no, Boinkai is definitely sort of something like a half. That, it didn't look high or low. Yeah, Kane Vision definitely has videos on Boinkai. Boinkai, <laughs> dude, I couldn't <laughs> publish that. Dollars. I couldn't publish that Kane Vision podcast because really, yeah, YouTube wouldn't. Yeah, I couldn't publish uh, it. What are you doing? Psychic to the chest. How about like, what is? It? Oh my god! You just have to go over there and touch him with some part of your body. It's difficult. It's not easy, Mike. Throat punch. <laughs> You're so I think proud he of this goes up like You're so proud of that like, moment. You love that you hope. spun his headgear around. Oh yeah, that's the best part. Because he he was up like three points on me, three zero or something. I felt like an idiot. I was like, okay, this is the one thing I'm going to smoke everybody <laughs> Damn, homie, why are you knock him down like that? <laughs> <laughs> What's the contact? Like, how hard are you supposed to punch and kick? Um, You're not supposed to go hard, but that was the only one I knew I was ever going to do. So I was like, eh, let's just have at it. Plus, his second coach was like a sparring. Remarkably. How is that yeah. remarkable? What's remarkable about you placing second? Because I don't do katas. So, like, I, I wasn't expecting to even place. Oh. Okay. All also, right. a little humility, you know? A little, uh. a little humility. <laughs> I don't know. We got to do this again. Hold on. Let's run this back here. Let's no, go. not the kata again. <laughs> Let's go. <sighs> 352, you said? No, I think it was. I think it was a different video. I no, think, think period. Is Sensei Seth? What is the name of this kata, Sensei Seth? Uh, that would be Basai. 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 Oh my god! I'm gonna bow to these old crusty fuckers here. <laughs> there is not. There. Listen. Listen. And watch how bad my balance is the whole time too. Listen. I was nervous. I felt. Yeah. There Listen. is not there is not one piece of bicep definition in this entire high school gymnasium. <laughs> There's not a single <laughs> visible vein, tendon, or striation in this entire There's, high school gymnasium. There, that's bands. packed. That's packed there's, with ravenous spectators. <laughs> You're on the to be fair. There's no, I don't have just, to. No, just, Seth, to be fair, nothing. You're they're on hard to hurt. Veins. We're not going to be fair. Hey, I was making a joke, Mike. I oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Head. I couldn't hear it. I was talking over you. They're all forehead veins. The forehead veins, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> you give a little bow. You had to key frame in on that bow. It was a super important moment. <laughs> yeah, it's respect. You know? <laughs> this little cat stance here. Yeah, the cat stances. I, I, I'm a long, tall guy. I'm you look funny. Guys. You look. I do. You look funny doing the the cat stance. I know. I think the cat stance can look cool. Not for it's, me though. So this thing here that Seth is doing, I think, I think this can look cool. I think some people look cool doing that. Seth is just a very big person to be doing that. 
That's like a little. That's the little, the little, the little chick in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon that was also mm-hmm. in um, Rush Hour. Mm-hmm. She looks cool doing that. Yeah. I got too much haunch. Yeah, she's too haunchy. Too haunchy. And there's a lot of cat stands in here. Just cat mm-hmm. stands city. Look at this dumper. Look at that. <laughs> that's a stick. That's a dumper. thick boy right there. Look at that. Look at that rumpus. That's, that's too much haunch. Pride. And the sidekick I do is terrible too. That is an industrial strength turd cutter on this on this (laughs) guy right here. Yikes! Oh my god, Seth. That's that's drum that's drum chun. Drum chun. You cannot do drum chun to this. That's no. There's no drum chun in that. Let's look at my wrestling. Is that a sidekick? Do you? Yeah, the sidekick was from a from a rear leg, which is hard anyway. Sidekick from the rear leg is hard anyway. But this is not on par with your current. Listen, Mm-mm. here's how I know you should get Sensei Seth's sidekick course. Because it doesn't look like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's it. Yeah, right leg sidekick for me is this not moment. as good. This moment. What is this? <laughs> oh, no. I don't know. Where are you at? What am I you doing? You got your feet you gotta... together and you're like doing two salutes with your. Are you a giant king cobra? Did you make a king cobra? Is that what this is? What is that? <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that. Okay. Um, wow. Let me think of the bunkai for that one. Oh, no, God, just what is it called? <laughs> it's been a while. I don't think it has a move. <laughs> it's supposed it... to be like a, a brush. Or I think it's supposed to come from like if somebody this, grabs your... This it's, looks like choreography for a, sh- for a musical. This movement right here. I'm trying to think of what that musical would be called. Oh. <laughs> that punch. That punch. Wait. It's a musical about trying to get I uh, want us to a look sugar at daddy this, at a karate. This punch. <laughs> Let's look at. <laughs> now, this next little punch. Look closely. I cannot I cannot think of any other noise that this punch makes other than <laughs> 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 this punch. Watch it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Oh. Why did you do this to me? Why did you do this to yourself tonight? You know, I... I I didn't think it through. You obviously did not. I obviously didn't think it through. James Shackleford with the super chat wants to know where you can get a Sensei Seth sidekick course. Uh, <laughs> I gotta I gotta turn real quick. Uh, that's Sensei Seth.teachable.com. Let slash. me put it. I'm gonna put it in the um. Listen. Yeah. There. I got. There. I owe you this at much, Seth. Yes. Yeah. At least. You go to Sensei Seth.teachable.com. Right? Yep. Yep. And then if you want to get specific, slash P slash sidekicks. Slash P slash sidekicks. That's probably your your premier course right now, right? If you were only going to get one, that would be the first one you'd point people to, right? Uh, The higher kicks one might be better, but yes. Then let me just leave it at teachable. Yep, that's fine. Sensei Seth. www.senseiseth.teachable.com. There is now a link in the description below. He has several courses, one of which is how to kick higher, which he can definitely kick higher. One of is, uh, one of them is how to um, do a side kick better than what you saw in this era broadcast tonight. Oh my god, dude! I'm not. Whew. Let me bring in Stevie K. Yeah, Stevie K. Nineteen says like anything. Bring in anyone that can just distract. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> oh, Sensei Seth, how are you doing? I'm oh. doing great, buddy. How are you? Oh, I was just lo- looking up the derivative. That's Basai, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm actually at work right now at my station. So if I have to leave, right, it's because I'm actually doing work. But uh, uh, I see. What's up? I see. Man? You're so mean to Seth. I really <laughs> Although I did watch, <laughs> and I. <laughs> <laughs> we're all sitting in the chat kind of laughing but like we're like oh my gosh it went what's really going off on Seth it went too long 
I, I went too no, long. No, I was. <laughs> I went too long. What Mike doesn't even know is that I turned off the call for a second. I just went and cried, and yeah. I came back, and he was still going. Oh, oh my it, gosh. No, I was going to ask you, what were you guys talking about before this? It looks like you guys were talking about knife and being in UK and stuff like that. And no. I kind of missed it because no, I was actually Nobody working. was talking about knives and being in the UK. Maybe they were talking Chat. about it in the oh. chat. Yeah, check no, it, just in the chat. It's kind of haywire sometimes. But I just want to say, you, hey, they were talking about using Wing Chun to pass people's guard in the chat. So I don't know what you were getting out of there. Oh, okay, no, no, no. I, but anyway, just to just, I want to just give a reason of why I compete in kata. Okay. Ooh, yes. Okay. I because like I I fought for fifteen years. I sustained five concussions. I separated my sternum, and I have permanent damage from an uh, vision damage from an orbital fracture in my eye. And my wife said, well, she was my girlfriend at the time. She says, if you don't stop fighting, I'm leaving you. Yeah. So if you look up Steve Kawamura, right, I'll just type it in the chat, right? I have a video. The video that comes up is me winning a, a, a tournament, okay, doing a form. But I just wanted to get, come out and give a reason why I compete in, in forms because that makes it sense. is no longer – it makes no – no, it's no longer smart for me to compete in contact. No, it's, it's amazing that you had to – that <laughs> – she had to explain that to you. <laughs> well, I actually fought with a full face mask, right? And what what made me stop, right? After I healed from my, uh, uh, sorry, my orbital fracture, which is uh, the same fracture that uh, uh, Josh Koscheck sustained huh? in this fight with GSP, is uh, mm. uh, when it when it healed, it 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 only heals with scar tissue underneath, right? Right. So whenever so I got kicked in that side of the head, uh huh, hard my eye would shake. I was gonna say, wouldn't there be like pressure behind Ooh. your eye or under your eye or whatever? Yeah, but it would it would vibrate and then I would lose my depth perception. Well, cause it was too, everything so, was too flush. That scar tissue's in there and like your, your shit's supposed to be able to float around a little bit, but you're all jammed up with the scar tissue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, and the other question I wanted to ask you, Icy, is like uh, a couple of weeks ago, you were talking about how you're different with uh, Maddox. Right. Who mm -hmm. I, I've looked at your videos and I think you've trained him very, very well. What advice? And you're, you're there's another gentleman that that you came on that has his dad's given him a hard time. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. you have him on kind of regularly. And we want to see where it goes with that. I don't know if he was on earlier tonight. But what advice can you give to me? Because I'm teaching my daughter. OK, I just I've been training her for two years but as a coach. What advice can you give to me to try and stay away from or to try and do with your offspring so to speak or what have you done with maddox that seemed to have worked so maddox's growth as an athlete and as a martial artist and as a fighter is actually stunted because he is with me really yes he is actually not the best that he could be because what i figured out is that if I were to train him the way I would train, if he was not my son and he was the exact same kid, right? I would be okay. going hard on that dude. That he would be like strength and conditioning. He'd be training because he's re he's serious. You know what I mean? And I would take no bullshit off of him. I would treat him. I would train him like a fighter if he was not my kid. Because that's so where he's what? at. That's what he needs. Actually, at his age and his skill level, he needs some hard training. I just can't be the one to do it. What I figured out is that there's actually a net loss in his training the harder I try. So I've actually backed way off. I make sure it's playful. I make sure it's fun. About once a month, he'll come to sparring and we'll beat the shit out of him. You know what I mean? We'll treat him like one of us. And uh, other than that... And he's he, 11, right? He's 11. Um, he's 11, Okay. Other than that, he play he plays around in the kids' class, and then he does the adults' class with – there's a kid that's 12 who comes to the adults' class, and them two partner together, and they just they just do the drills, and I make some correction. And I mostly correct the other guy, and I don't mess with Maddox too much because okay. there's such a weird dynamic. If I say something to him – and now if you came and you were teaching him, and you told him anything, he'd be like, "Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir." Uh, but if well, I, say I call it the mommy daddy syndrome, I call it the mommy daddy syndrome for anything, right? Like, let's say they're playing violin or something, right? Yeah. Like you could say something, but somebody else has to say that to them. Mm -hmm. 
for it to make sense, right? Yeah. So just let me recap. So you're saying I, I can't push too hard or I shouldn't push too hard, right? I got to back off a little bit and have somebody else. It would be Sorry, best if you had another teacher that you trusted very much that you believed in that would teach you the right way. That would be best for her growth okay. as a martial artist. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah. And I mean, same boat here. Like, I obviously, I don't have any kids, but my dad taught me. And for the most part, like, uh, he tried his best not to be the one who's teaching me. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. All right. But, thanks uh, for the advice. But, but the the other thing I'll say is that if like right now we don't have the the time or the ability or the logistics to get him into another place, so I just make sure it's fun. Just keep it fun and playful right. and let him grow and experience stuff. And I just make little corrections like, hey man, you know you got to do this. Um. Blah 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 blah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And now he's seen my videos, so he's like, he doesn't want to train anywhere else because I'm not around. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was gonna say because like like i showed that video of uh you know you when you, you're talking about like uh i think it was uh uh like stuff that you could use other than expensive equipment yes and and then you made that kind of montage with them right yeah. and then i was like i showed my wife and it's like wow that kid's really good right and then it's like you know he's 11 my, my daughter's only six right and I, I am doing some of those things, but it, right now, like you said, logistically, it's just really hard to find an instructor. And I have found one, and we've done some Zoom classes. But unfortunately, we're opening up in stages here in Canada. Yeah. And we're not at stage three yet, which is when martial arts schools will be able to open again. Yeah. So uh, everything's Zoom she's, she's and in a six. park. And all that. Yeah. Dude, it, the, the most important thing for six, is she your oldest? Do you have older kids? Yeah. Oh, I just have a, a two-year-old, but yeah, I make it fun. Yeah, and honestly, listen, we do not train for more than 15 minutes. <laughs> there you go. Sorry, there go you ahead. go. It's so mm -hmm. meaningless. Like people want so badly. It's so hard, especially us as martial artists to watch our kid and uh, to, to not be good at it. You know, we want to correct things that don't matter at all. If you make her hate it, that's going to do more damage than we oh we make sure her jab is perfect by the end of this week but in exchange she hates martial arts forever you know right. it's just not worth it like just so play you got to increase her attributes and make her enjoy being you know exercising and enjoy training and mm -hmm. that sort of thing yeah. my, my personal opinion make it fun yeah make it fun make it fun oh, yeah, or make I, it nothing yeah, I bought Sensei Seth's book too and I, I really liked it like the kids hey, book the, or whatever the, ki the karate games for kids yeah, yeah yeah and like i'm going to incorporate it into the into our training and stuff like that yeah so. yeah th i've had a lot of success with a lot of those things cool that's awesome to hear shut up Seth. all right well i gotta business. get going because uh, <laughs> uh my partner's motioning to me that, oh, okay. uh, we gotta go somewhere so you guys take care and thanks for having me on again i see thank you for calling see you buddy Bye. <laughs> we're talking about your course and i'm like this is none of your business but out of it <laughs> hey 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 get out of here Gizmo of Shaolin. Gizmo of Shaolin is live. Hey, what's up, Mike? It's been a sec. What's up, man? Hey, I had a quick question. Actually, it's a good thing that Seth was here, too, because uh, now I have both opinions of both a modern and a traditional martial artist. Because <laughs> he's so traditional. <laughs> traditional, so modern. quote unquote. Yeah. Uh, my question is, when do you think it would be appropriate to change something in a style? Just because, like, uh, you know, I, I come from uh, mostly kung fu background and stuff like that. Like you want to change? Well, I mean, I've done you other stuff, but kung I don't want to change anything. No, 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 no. I don't think you're in charge. It's just more of, like, I was you have to say, be in charge of it to change it. Okay. <laughs> like, what <laughs> I mean is, like, I want to add in stuff from, like, boxing and stuff like that. Oh, like, to your this, personal this... style? Yeah. Oh, okay. But it feels works. awkward. Yeah, as, as soon as you see that it works, I mean, like, obviously, you if, if you're in class, like, you might not want to bust out some boxing moves uh, yeah. instead of doing what they're trying to teach you. But, like, as soon as you see something that works, like, incorporate it. Okay. So, I don't know. It was just a – it was just mostly, like, a weird thing I was thinking I'm, about a lot over the week. I'm so. of yeah, the opinion I that I agree entirely with Seth on that. If you are in class at another place that does a certain style of martial arts – while you're there during their class in front of their instructor, you do what they're doing. 
I, I believe yes. that wholeheartedly, even if it's fucking stupid. You know, mm-hmm. that's you. Okay. You went to their class to do their thing. Do their thing. Right. It's, not only is it uh, respectful, but ah. chances are there might be things about it that you don't yet get. Like, you might think, well, this is mm-hmm. dumb and pointless, and this would be better if I just did this. And you might not even... Their lesson might be dumb, but it also might be one that you don't understand yet. So while yeah. you're well, there at that school, yeah. do their thing. But on your own, you can do whatever you want. It also depends on what your goal is. Like if you want to be the best martial artist you can ever be, I think you should approach each martial art in the beginning stages with an empty cup and do each of them individually and then blend them. But if you're like more advanced or you already are competing and fighting and you just want to pull tricks and things from here and there, just like Seth said, when it works, that's when you do it. And if it doesn't work, you discard it. I'm very famous for saying... Uh, keep what is useful and discard what is useless. I, I <laughs> yeah. very well known for saying that. that yes, you are. Oh man, uh, I do have one more question though. Okay, go. Uh, sorry, I mean, uh, this is just the last thing. Uh, so how do I word this? Without oh my god! Like... All right, no, no, no. is it? I <laughs> is it normal for col- uh, Olympic karatekas to be very? Why do they never want to do full contact? Olympic uh, karate. So like, um, yeah, Olympic karate just started twenty twenty one. But like, this, I get what you mean. Like the WKF. So is it normal for yeah. Olymp? Like, it's not normal to be an Olympic karate. How do how do we know what the normal thing for them to do is? I like, here I have a, a bit I, of a story. It's asking. it's a quick Seth, one. You you a- you exp- answer this. So yeah. I so so what he's asking is why oh, yeah. is why is the sport version of karate like pretty much no contact? Oh, because they're pussies. And it's, well, it's it's yeah. because the the best way to make money in any sport is to make it as as accessible as possible, to and pussies. especially in like karate, yeah. taekwondo, stuff like that. That's mostly kids. The best way to make it pussies. accessible to parents is to get them. <laughs> it's they can see something. It's like not very violent. Like those kids walk away without scratches. Right. Um, okay. So, in in my opinion, that's why it ends up that way. Also, because hmm. pussies. Uh, I mean. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. I'm not, I'm, I mean, the the you draw you draw the attention of of kind of like what you're giving off. You know what I mean? So I'm not gonna say that word particularly. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, the karate combat's trying to like work back towards having a little more contact. Make it manly. I, I think yes. I think of, uh, yeah. effectively like what it has to do with is making it as scalable as possible and concussions to everyone is not scalable. Um, yeah. Like there's only so many great UFC fighters, but there can be <laughs> way more people who are really, really good at karate because you don't have to take as much of a toll. The, the barrier for entry is far lower. Yeah. Like anybody. Right. Like, yeah. I, w- I wouldn't say far, like to, to be the best of the best. Obviously they're very fast. No, no, yeah. No, the best. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying, I'm not saying effective. that the guys who are good at it are not skilled. Yeah, right. and and that it's easier to be successful. I'm saying like to do it, to just participate in the sport, is requires less of your your blood and your life your life force. You know, you don't yeah. have to. I, I attribute yeah. it primarily to literally those same tournaments that I like. It's really easy to put on a tournament and have way more people show up when way more parents are cool with their kid getting punched in the head because it's like <laughs> not even really happening. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that, that that was pretty much it. So uh, basically, basically, Seth's saying is because they're pussies. That's what he says. He says sport karate guys are just humongous pussies. Basically, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I, there was like a small story just attached to it. I went to a karate tournament in Chicago. Uh, I think in the beginning of January, uh, I signed. I only signed up for the what was it? Continuous sparring. Yeah. Uh, this was like a four hour drive from my house. I showed up. They told me to come at like nine in the morning. And then I ended up staying there till four because no one wanted to tell me when my event started. And then when it started, I was the, I just looked at a screen that said winner and it was my name on it. Oh, that's the worst. That sucks. I, I was super pissed. There's and then no I heard division? something. There, no one. Uh, I remember talking to a guy uh, that was walking around. I just asked him, oh, uh, how does the whole continuous sparring thing work? Because uh, I, I wasn't sure if it was full. Yeah, if no, it was full or no, it's what I did half contact. That last match that I posted, that that IKF PKB point match that I posted, <laughs> that's called, that's continuous sparring. That's what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, well, he he told me something weird. It's like, oh, you're doing continuous. That's scary, dude. They hit real fucking hard. It's like, well, isn't that kind of <laughs> point? 
Ah, uh, so my point Yikes. is proven. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you, Gizmo. All right. Later, guys. Later. See you, buddy. All right. Mm. Let's take on a caller named Joe. And so let me answer this question. I see. How long will it take for... This is from the Podbean chat. If you want to go in the Podbean chat, that's how you get connected on to come on the air. But Buford says, I see. How long will it take for a reasonably experienced boxer to throw technique out the window and become proficient at landing the ice pick? First of all, the ice pick is technique. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I like how Joe, we preface that. <laughs> Joe Antal, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm, well, I'm nervous. <laughs> You're nervous. You guys are great. No, no, I am. Seth's here too. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm here to bridge the gap between Icy Mike and the average person. There I'm, you go. I'm, I'm happy with, I'm I'm happy with the both of you. I'll take like it. That. <laughs> Joe, what's up, man? Oh, I was I was thinking about a lot of things. Um, one thing recently was brought up about people being averse to doing contact. Um, my CFO and I have a have a kung fu background but we're doing mixed martial arts and we do experience that a lot with people who are just trying to school out you get some people who and i mean you've talked about this in your videos mike when you have people who do different levels and earlier in this show you talked about people who okay they're okay with checking kicks or some contact right. but D maybe different not people are cool with different levels of contact yeah but you know it's some people don't even stick around long enough for for you to kind of gauge them out with right. the school. But I mean, this story is actually relevant to the original topic with people going too hard. We had a guy come in and try us out mm -hmm. um, just for a couple of classes and he seemed fine. Right. Uh, but then I went off to school, so I wasn't able to come into class and train. I could practice on my own, but that was considered, you know, downtime for me. I'll refine my form and I'll come back and yeah. we'll check on where I am as far as contact goes. But, you know, we do things like pressure testing. We do things like sparring. We also do regular drills. And This guy, apparently, while I wasn't there, was starting to get excited with the junior students. And, you know, he was doing stuff he saw on the UFC. And mm -hmm. I think my see if we talked to him a couple of times, but he was like, Nobody wanted to roll with him. No one wanted to do cheese out. No one wanted to do anything because he was throwing kicks and elbows and like a punches only drill and stuff like yeah. that. And I had one of my one Doing of my junior students. That goes back to what we were talking about earlier. When you're in someone else's class, you respect what they're teaching and they're doing. You should be just be doing what mm -hmm. they're saying. Even if like you say, oh, this would be cool if I did this. It's like dudes that throw shadow boxing punches in a jujitsu roll. Like they pretend to ground and pound you. <laughs> yeah. So fucking like, stupid. oh, here, I can do this. And it's like, yeah, you're, you are. Thanks for telling me, but <laughs> I wasn't prepared to. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. My, my CD ends up picking him, catching a knee, picking him up and slamming him. Cause he was just like, you know, I'm done. Mm -hmm. But you know, my teacher was like, oh man, that's not what I wanted to happen. Not how I wanted to go. So he and I had a discussion about that and they had a, I was thinking about, you know, you were saying, well, I don't feel like I, I handle this correctly. And we had the same difficulty at my school. You know, how do you talk to somebody like that? How do you, we had an, a, a kid, junior black belt, um, 13 years old, maybe. Right. Um, and he had a history of having an older student kind of picking on him a little bit. So we understood that he got frustrated and he was dealing with stuff at home. And so we understood and we just kind of tried to do what you had before is set him up with somebody who can handle him you right. know um but he he started acting out more and more and there was a point where they were doing oh man just just strike checking just fists and he goes and punches my seafood right in the nose like full Ooh. force and he goes no don't do not do that again and he goes for it again just you know out of spite and he's like okay um you're dismissed and you know he he talked to his parents, oh, got in touch with his parents, I and said that. <laughs> maybe I should have gone with <laughs> well, that. Yeah, maybe I should have just but, said, you know, "Hey, you never... you're dismissed." I shouldn't have said, <laughs> "It's my way or the highway, and if you don't like it, you can get the fuck out my gym." I, I mean, I think that was like you're dismissed. You I think the the, the premise of that was fair. I think I think the intent behind it was fair. Um. And that's ex that's exactly what my he, he talked to his parents. They didn't believe this kid was capable of this. They didn't believe he'd done it. Well, also, if they uh, weren't martial artists, they they don't understand what it is that you're telling them he did anyway. They're like, I thought y'all were yeah, punching and kicking each other. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a really good point. I hadn't considered that, but you know, so that neither of those guys come around anymore. But um, it really, it really got me thinking about because I'm looking into opening up my own practice Don't when I that. graduated. Don't when do I that. <laughs> fair enough. Don't do that. Um, fair enough. Do not do that. I promise. <laughs> Unless, let me qualify that. Unless, yeah, I was gonna say there is a. So I've always said, don't open your own school, don't open your own gym, don't open your own whatever practice. You call it a practice, like you're like, like a psychiatrist or like a doctor. (laughs) He's. I mean, is not every great martial artist also a psychologist? Yeah. Um, If you can afford to pay the bills for your gym or studio or school comfortably with zero students go for it mm. you know like if your job like i know a guy he was opening a place uh in georgia a friend of mine and he said i could i could open it i could pay for it easily mm. not even miss the money and have no students mm. and i was like okay then do it yeah my situation is a little bit different because my teacher doesn't actually have a gym or location he goes to um schools uh daycares um businesses recreation centers so he goes to the location he basically takes it on the road yeah he's hustling he yeah that's what seth does in a way i do yeah that's what seth does (laughs) yeah yeah but he's he's done pretty well for himself compared to a lot of the mcdojos around here and i mean like they're all gonna die when quarantine opens back up but he's still able to do business and i mean you know zoom classes well, it's yeah, not he doesn't ideal. have overhead and he's also adaptable he can also pivot and change and and yeah yeah he's yep. he's flexible and I, in my situation like i would still be working with him as an extension of the same school the same system but like he had yeah he had his own teacher who tried to like really keep him under thumb and under heel in a situation like that so i him coming and being open with me, like I'm not gonna do that to you. I'm I totally know how it feels to kind of be just kind of breathing down the neck like that yeah. and be exploited like that. So I have you know I kind of trust him not to do that. But um, no, it it definitely got me thinking about and and talking with about handling kids too because well kung fu especially has been relegated to glorified babysitting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So you're Dude, mostly. I wanted to sign up for kung fu, like after Sergio came, and I realized that I'm base. I'm basically a kung fu master already, anyway. Um, <laughs> I wanted to just go ahead and like make it, make it like legit. I just want to go ahead and get certified. You know what I mean? Go get, mm-hmm. uh, go get ordained as a. Uh, I mean, most most uh, of the guys who have certification just you know just bought it anyway. So well, I wanted it's to go. Certified. I just needed it to be like. You know, made official. I am a kung yeah, fu master. Yeah. I am a kung oh, fu master. Oh, obviously, yeah, clearly. But I just no. I, lo- I I love Sergio, and your content with him really showed a lot of stuff that you were already doing that was great. And well, he I told even... me when he came, and if you saw the the last two videos I did, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. He's like, dude, you're already doing kung fu. He's like, that's kung fu. <laughs> and uh, so I wanted to kind of make that. it official, and I could not find a place that either. First of all, I could barely find a place that exists that teaches Kung Fu anywhere. And I've definitely not found one that didn't look like a joke. Yeah. You know why that is? Because if you advertise that they're teaching Kung Fu, you look even more like a joke. sounds like a joke. Yeah. 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 Well, especially, I mean, that's why I have to lead with, listen, we have a Wing Chun background. We have a Kung Fu background, but we are doing mixed martial arts. Part of that's because that's the truth. But when I go to to other gyms and I tell people, I tell people that I do Wing Chun, I have to defend that, Mm -hmm. you know? And that's part and parcel for the reputation the style has gotten, which kind of sucks. But, I mean, all these isolated locations, I mean, no one's doing Wing Chun the way that my master and I do it. And no one's doing it the way Sergio do it. No one doing it the way Kung Fai Yi guys do it. And definitely no one worth their salt's doing it the way the guys in China are getting their butt whipped by Xu Xiao Dong do it. So, yeah. And ain't nobody doing all... it the way I do it. Absolutely not. For good reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh man shut up Seth. but <laughs> hey, he's got he's got to answer back sometime right yeah that's right yeah he does Sneaking well anyway I can get him. all right well thanks for it calling, was great man. talking to you guys yeah right. thank you for having me see you later Bye-bye.
See you, bud. All right. My Let's see my here. uh my co-hosting is a lot like my sparring. Somebody said, where I'm waiting for my moment. <laughs> and I just I just sneak in when I get a chance. You're waiting for your moment. My he's only moment. got he's uh he's got a um. Sensei Seth has a uh, his uh his power meter depletes like it's 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 he he'll have like a killer corny ass but good joke and then it's like mm-hmm. zzz, 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 builds back up I gotta builds I gotta back reset up. yeah builds back up builds back up I'm on that cheat code I'm on that cheat code I can just go 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 much like actually that's funny that's funny that we draw that comparison to sparring because that's our sparring styles as well. I was like, go, 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 go. Bing, 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 yeah. bing, 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 bing. Well, I've had a great time tonight. I hope you all have had a great time tonight. Um, thank you so much to those of you who contributed with Super Chat. 100% of those Hi. proceeds will go to feed the hungry children that are in my house. Um, Except for half of them, which are now mine. <laughs> yeah. I didn't agree <laughs> to that. You can't just come on and say... I am claiming the super chats because you told to, one funny joke. I'm gonna try and figure out how to boot you from the, the chat. You can't boot me from my own. <laughs> Do you remember when you thought I hacked you? One time I convinced Seth that I hacked his YouTube channel. I'm pretty sure you did. No, he had he put stuff in a. I won't even get into why. He just he he thought he had a bunch of videos private. They weren't. <laughs> and they I, were. They weren't. I watched them. I sent you a screenshot of the ones I was watching. Yeah. Darren Chan the, says, Mike, I can explain myself. This is the guy that says <gasps> he uses Wing Chun to pass the guard. Oh, yes. Okay. Darren Chan, I would love for you to explain yourself. I would love. Yeah. Oh, love from Jesse thought you meant half of the children are now yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's three, so that might become difficult. Yeah, the two little ones, I guess, is half. Like, you put them together. <laughs> Oh yeah, or the or the biggest one. Yeah, you just take Max, and that's half of my children. Yeah, there we go. Let's see. I want to know what Darren Chan has to say. Darren say, Chan. So in... look, you're screwing up, Darren Chan. You've been saying all night how you use Wing Chun to pass a guard. Then you say, Mike, I can explain myself. I say, okay, go ahead. And then you say, please. Like, dude, do it, do it, do it, do it now, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Oh, he's backtracking. Mm, I don't think he says no. Ryan using Wing Chun to pass the guard. I simply replied, "But I guess you can." I don't think you can. But if he claims, I don't think that's what you said. This is like the equivalent of a parent walking in on their kids doing some like Ryan, suspicious stuff. Ryan Liu says, "I'm the one who said you could use Wing Chun concepts to pass butterfly guard." So I don't know really what that's you mean by that. Chung. Huh? It's it's drum chun. It's drum literally chun. just yeah. We've just already used drum chun. And, and Ryan moving Lou, I would be. Legs. I would. I would be. I would. I would not say stuff like that, because you probably, I, without even having to hear it, you probably have some sort of explanation where it's like, well, the principle used in Wing Chun for like opening this and doing that and destabilizing this and you know like sure but you could also say that i could use football concepts to pass butterfly guard by chopping my feet around in a circle you know and and doing a pass by or you know you could say that you could use uh half half of my wrestling is offensive lineman stuff that i learned right it's just like good leverage right just bodies are bodies so Mm -hmm. don't listen don't tell people that you can you can pass Butterfly and Reaper using sensitivity training for grip fighting, Wing Chun's powerful structure, double packs out, and other pushing punches to break posture and grip forms. You know what else you can use to pass Butterfly Guard? Fucking Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Directions. <laughs> like I could say that I, I could use uh, I could use auto auto mechanic principles because I've got a strong grip, and if I turn your wrist like it's a wrench, your arm will move. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I fucking mean, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu would be better. Uh yeah, no. So I would not say things like Wing Chun principles can be used to pass the guard. Um, that's a that's just a square peg round hole sort of thing. That's a sol- that's a solution looking for a problem. 
Oh, man. Oh, we got some guys. I'm getting out of here. We got these dudes talking about, oh, the gun, does that work? Use a gun to pass the guard. And sh- Shut up. Shut up. People that talk about <laughs> using gun. People that talk in comment sections about using guns to win fights have zero mm-hmm. percent chances of using guns to win fights. They have yeah. a point zero one percent chance of committing a murder, and then other than that, they're just like, I'm not saying that guns. And here's the already the straw man's being constructed that you're like you think a gun wouldn't help me fight. I'm saying no one that would do that talks like that. Because no, people nobody. that do yeah, violence right. professionally understand the difference between training your empty hand skills and training your firearm skills, training them in congruence, the things you get out of training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and the things you get out of training on the range, and then the things you get out of rolling with a blue gun, you know? Mm. <sighs> oh, well. I'm out of here. I'm Icy Mike. That was Sensei Seth and a whole bunch of other cool guys. Uh... We're going to be changing soon. I would love to know what you think. We're going to be moving the podcast, I think, to maybe Monday afternoons. Mm. Give some other people some time. Mm. I was actually going to I was actually gonna um, move it because the viewer viewership wasn't as high as I would like it to be. And then we had uh. 300 viewers for like the whole first half hour. Yeah, I saw that. It was kind of insane. But uh, thank you guys so much. If you need anything, DM Sensei Seth on Instagram.